As the province grapples with a pandemic, it is also in the middle of an epidemic. The opioid and addiction crisis has claimed a record number of lives this year. And this weekend, advocates are working to combat the stigma of addiction once again. Recovery Day BC, Canada's largest addiction and mental health festival, had to go virtual this year due to the pandemic, like so many other events. But the message is still the same. Joining us with more on addiction and treatment is Nirmala Raniga, founder of Chopra Addiction and Wellness Centre. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Sarah. Happy Sunday to you and all the viewers. Happy Thank Sunday you. to you as well. So first off, talk to us about the challenges of recovery from addiction, uh, something that you know all too well. Well, you know, being in this field for decades, I know the biggest uh, issue people face is the number one is the stigma around uh, being addicted. And not only stigma, there is actually a lot of shame Shame is a horrible, horrible thing. So shame combined with stigma, and then there is the, the guilt. Uh, those who use um, often feel guilty about uh, um, the choice they make. And often the choice is really about coping their um, uh, emotional pain. A lot of times when we, well, I'd say most time, 99% of the times people who use, they just don't use just for the sake of using. They're using because they're self-medicating uh, emotional pain or some form of trauma. And uh, combined with, uh, if you look at the current situation with COVID-19, that has forced all of us to go into um, isolation. And uh, addiction is really about isolation. Those who use uh, isolate. And uh, we as human beings, we create a connection and we want to be around people. We are social beings. And uh, with all the um, services that has been available, if you look at the numbers from last year to this year, uh, last year our numbers were the whole year was uh, just around 950. And we are only just uh, end of July and we have over 900 people already have, have succumbed to this uh, opioid crisis. And when we think about it, what has made the situation worse is the isolation. Mm. That uh, those services that were available going to a clinic, um, going to the consumption side, that support for people hasn't been quite there. So that has caused um, more overdose deaths. Um, the isolation, the loneliness, um, not feeling the connection. And the pandemic on top of the opioid crisis has sort of created a perfect storm, as you mentioned, that mounting death toll that we've seen in 2020 so far. Uh, what exactly are all the factors going into the pandemic compounding the overdose crisis, in your opinion? And what has your firsthand experience been with it helping on the front lines? Well, we know that, uh, you know, at our clinics, we regularly see patients. Patients come in and see the doctor. We are an old clinic, which is opioid agonist um, treatment. And these are people who are choosing uh, treatment and recovery. And, and, and we, we're looking at Suboxone or Methadone uh, as treatment options. And so when the uh, opioid, uh, sorry, the COVID-19 crisis came around, uh, most of the places were shut down. And that was because of um, uh, the fear of the spread. Whereas we, our clinics, and I know some of the other clinics may have been open, we can continue to stay open. And the number one reason was, this is the reason, is that uh, if we don't have the connection with those patients uh, that need services, they will go out and use. And, uh, you know, more recently when things have opened up, so our, even though our doors may have been closed, our staff were calling the patients at home encouraging them to go to the pharmacy, the ph prescriptions were faxed to the pharmacy, the counselors were coming, uh, calling the, um, the patients to make sure that they stay connected. And that disconnect is the number one reason the, there's been uh, patients or people going out to buy the illegal uh, toxic fentanyl. And that has been the problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, as things are opening up, we're still, you know, it's the, st the services are still not really feel fully open or there to those who need uh, the support. So while, you know, we have the um, consumption sites, we have harm reduction. Beyond that, we feel, we strongly feel the recovery community. I was there last night at the virtual, um, uh, where the virtual um, program was from. Um, I just looked at the um, 
the memorial tree, the number of names on that tree. Um, it's, just, it's incredible how many people have died. It was very sad for me to see that and reflect back on how we as a community, how we as a society can reach out and do more for those people who are seeking and needing help. And, uh, you know, through education, through, through awareness, through what we are talking about right mm-hmm. now, then I'm hoping more people will call. You know, there's a number 211 BC. Um, it's a BC number. People actually call, can call that number and ask uh, for help. And they can find a clinic or um, support in their area to get help because it is about reaching out. Uh, at the end of the day, yes, you know, a few days ago, somebody was saying that a person would, would want to get help. But often, you know, when a person is down, they're depressed or anxious, they may not be come to the, to the place of asking help. We as family members, we as friends, should be able to um, uh, reach out to our, our, those who are suffering with addiction or using is really encouraging and supporting them to seek treatment, to go out and get help. There's a lot of help out there. It's that that access is missing. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we all want um, our government to do more, is to provide more treatment beds, uh, support more uh, recovery, uh, because we know, working in this field for this many years, 30 years, that people's lives do change. Uh, relapse is part of the journey and it's a journey of healing. And I have seen in my, um, all these years, that we, you know, there are some most, most beautiful, creative people that come through the door. Uh, you may think uh, that, you know, the way they dress, the way they look, we, it's, a, it's a stigma. But once they come on the other side, it's, it's just very beautiful people. I mean, that fear, that shame really keeps people trapped in the cycle of uh, addiction, mm-hmm. that, that they're being judged. And uh, these are all temporary things. And as human beings, two things we don't know how to do. One one is we don't want to let go and, and uh, we don't want to forgive. And if we all move to a place where there's more forgiveness, and embracing uh, people who have challenges and and really supporting them, I think there is more more people who will come out and seek help. Absolutely, and thank you so much, Nirmala, for your work in breaking the stigma and for your wisdom in sharing it with us today. Nirmala Raniga, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, and wishing everyone a happy and safe Labor Day weekend. Make healthy choices.